So Pokemon Sun and Moon are probably two of the hardest vanilla Pokemon games Game Freak have ever produced. So with that, I thought to myself, can I beat Pokemon Sun in a hardcore Nuzlocke without catching any Pokemon? Let's find out. Here are the rules that I'll be using, just pause the video to have a look at them. So after what felt like an hour of cutscenes, we can finally pick our starter Pokemon. I go for Rowlet as we stare at each other for an awkward amount of time, which is normal according to Hala. I got a female Rowlet with a jolly nature which is actually pretty good as it raises my speed and drops my special attack. Thankfully for us, Hal has no idea what he's doing and he goes for Poplio, which makes the first battle a charity case. I've just picked up an item and I'm heading out of the grass, and this happens. That's right, it's a shiny ladybug. In a normal Nuzlocke, I would have caught this Pokemon regardless if I have already encountered a Pokemon in the area. But this is a no-catching Pokemon run. I didn't even bother to kill it as I needed to preserve my EXP anyway, so I just had to run from it. After bullying some kids at the local school and taking their money, the principal calls me out and wants to have a word with me. I tell her that I'm not giving the money back so she tries to take it by force. I work up with Brave a couple of times while tanking a couple of Thundershocks and then I proceed to leafage my way into victory. I take her money and continue ahead. After hearing about what I did at the school, Team Skull felt threatened and they try to take me out. I comfortably take them out and then I take on Ilima. It is at this point of the game I realise something. Just by fighting the mandatory trainers, the absolute lowest level I can get to the first trial is 13. And by the time you actually fight the totem Pokemon, you're level 14. Unfortunately there's no way around this, so I head to the first totem Pokemon. So the first thing I do is I drop the attack stat so it doesn't hit me as hard. He drops my speed, which is fine, and then calls in his ally Pokemon. With the help of an Orenberry, I'm able to get two workups, putting me at plus two, and I'm able to one-shot the Young Goose. I level up and learn Razor Leaf, and two more attacks is enough to take out the Gumshoes. After learning some new dance moves, once again I avoid all trainers, but have one more mandatory battle with Hal before I can face Hala. Unfortunately, after taking care of Hal, I am level 16, and there's no way around this. Thankfully, this does not happen again in the run, well kind of, but I'll explain that part later. So Hala leads with the Mankey, which really can't do much to me, so I go for the workup and get my attack boosted. From here I just start picking all of Hala's Pokemon until I win the battle. With that, Brave evolves and we head to the next island. Now that we're at the second island, we run into Dexio and we throw some leaves at his Pokemon for forcing us to battle him. And then Hal ambushes me. He's full of confidence thanks to his new Z move, but once again I throw some leaves at his Pokemon a few times and then head back to the ranch to collect an egg. So after running around a circle like a maniac, honestly how is Taurus not dizzy, I get an Eevee from the egg with a naughty nature. This nature is actually pretty bad because I want to get an Umbreon and this lowers its special defense, which is Umbreon's best stat. Anyway, I name him Shadow and make him hold a Soothe Belt until he's the happiest Pokemon ever. On our way to the next trial, we come across Gladion, who is not much of a challenge. His type null is pretty strong, but it's nothing we can't handle. After embarrassing him, Shadow evolves and I get him up to level 19 for Totem Wishy Washy. I know the level cap is 20, but I was confident with him at level 19 anyway. So Shadow and Brave make Totem Wishy Washy another charity case. So the plan here is to use Shadow to land as many sand attacks on Wishy Washy once I do that, I can safely bring in Brave. Brave is able to get four workups up and then Razor Leaf our team into victory. With that, we have the water trial done. We now finally make our way to easily the scariest trial by far, Totem Salazzle. I do have a game plan, but some RNG is required to make it through without any deaths at all. The first hurdle is to get to Salazzle with as much HP as possible, as you have to fight a Marowak and a Magma consecutively with no chance to heal beforehand. Thankfully, both Marowak and Magma go down easily with a few bites, and I'm able to get to Salazzle with full HP. Now it's time for the main event, and I do have a plan for it. So the plan in a nutshell is to try and take out Salazzle with Bite, and then use Rest and a Chester Berry to make sure I survive long enough to do it. So Salazzle starts off with a Toxic, which is fine, and I land a critical hit Bite. So far, a great start. Then she calls it a Salander. She uses Torment, which is a problem as the land it has torn and I'll be forced to struggle if it uses it. I land a bite and decide to switch, anticipating a flame burst from Salazzle and then a taunt from Salandit, which I know I can survive with Brave unless I get critted. Salazzle ends up going for a Venom Drench, which is perfect, and then Salandit hits me with a Venom Shock, 
Not what I expected, but the outcome was the same. So I do need to get Shadow back in, and I switch him into a Flame Burst, and then a Poison Gas, which is not too bad. I need to get a Rest off as soon as possible, and as long as Salazzle doesn't crit me with a Flame Burst, I will survive. Salazzle hits the Flame Burst and leaves me on 4 HP. I rest up to full health and cure my poison. I get critted with a Venoshock, but that's not a problem. From here I decide to work up as I know that it will be enough to kill both the Salazzle and Salander with one attack each. Salazzle goes for another Flame Burst which I eat and then Salander goes for a Taunt which is perfect. But thankfully it goes for another Flame Burst and even a critical hit wouldn't kill me. I finish Salazzle with a bite and then eat another Venoshock before biting Salander to its early grave. With that I learn a new dance, we get ourselves a Charizard that we can fly around on who would actually be very useful for the next trial. But of course, it's never that easy. So in the next trial, we need to help Mallow out by collecting some ingredients. Once I've got all the ingredients, she asks me to use Kiawe's thick club and turn it into goo. Yeah, that's just weird, Nintendo. Shortly after I've started making the goo with the thick club, Totem Lorantis comes out to put an end to all of this. So I start off by lowering Lorantis's attack so Shadow can eat hits better. Lorantis goes for a Solar Blade, which only takes one turn because of the power herb she's holding. I eat it up and Trumbeak comes out. I then lower Trumbeak's attack as a Pluck will be dangerous to Brave when I switch her in. Lorantis powers up again for another Solar Blade and I dodge a Screech. I lower Lorantis' attack again and eat up another Solar Blade from her. Trumbeak lands a Supersonic and now I'm confused. So I go for the Rest as I want to cure the Confusion. Unfortunately for me, Rest doesn't actually cure Confusion. This still worked out well as Trumbeak went for Pluck and would have eaten my Chester Berry anyway. I continue to rest and start using Sleep Talk, which is a 66% chance to either bite or baby doll eyes. I rinse and repeat, and eventually Lorantis and Trumbeak are both at negative 6 attack, so I can safely bring in Brave and get him to plus 3 attack. I'm then able to take out Lorantis over 2 turns, however I did get confused so I safely switch out to Shadow one last time to land the finishing blow onto Trumbeak. With our 5th trial complete, we can now get another Pokemon to the team. I go to the fossil shop at Kony Kony City and due to the one Pokemon per area, I can only pick one of them to revive. I opted for Kranidos as it evolves at a lower level and will be useful at the next couple of trials. I revive the fossil and name him Head First. He does have a boosted attack nature which makes him a pure powerhouse. On the way to the Grand Trial against Olivia, I'm stopped by Plumeria who is angry that I've been taking money from her grunts. So naturally, I beat up her Pokemon and take her money. So now we're up against Olivia and I just use Shadow to use Bite, Protect, get the leftovers recovery and then rest when needed. And I repeat that until Lycan Rock comes out. I protect on the Z move and continue with the same Bite, Protect, Leftovers strat until I win. So after taking care of Olivia, we are invited to the Aether Foundation and we need to take on a giant jellyfish. I actually just stall it out as it's the safest option. So we arrive on Ula Ula Island and before I can even breathe, Hal wants to fight. Shadow easily wars his Raichu and with a couple of bites he's down. Next is how's Brioni and I protect to get some leftovers HP. Lucky for us, Brioni goes for a Z move and we eat it because of the protect. I then decide to bring Brave in as she can deal more damage, however after one Razor Leaf, Hal switches into Flareon. I bring Shadow back in and I go for the bite protect leftovers strat until Flareon is down. So Brioni comes back in so I switch Brave back in to finish the battle. At this point, I realize that if I do not skip as many trainer battles as possible, I will overlevel for the next totem fight. So I carefully navigate my way to the bus stop, and for some reason, Team Skull are there and they want to pick a fight. After easily dealing with them, I take their money and head to the top of the mountain where I face Moy Lane and he still tights. He starts with a Skarmory and he almost one shots head first. So I drop a mountain on it and I bring in Shadow. Once again, with Bite, Protect Leftovers, I'm able to whittle down his whole team. At this point, Shadow is very OP and I'm glad I went with Umbreon. Unfortunately, during this fight, Shadow did overlevel and because of this, I cannot use him for the totem fight. The trial begins and I just continuously crush a bunch of bugs with a mountain until the totem comes in to stop me. He takes his sweet time, but eventually he gets here. When he does arrive, I just drop a mountain on him also. So he does call in a Charger Bug, but that will not change his unfortunate fate as I finish him off with a Rock Tomb. Charger Bug does try to stop me, but eventually follows the same fate. With that, Headfirst evolves into Rampados and we can continue on. So after crushing some bugs, Guzma the Bug Guy is picking on the Professor, so I step in to sort him out. I drop a mountain on his Galissapod, and then his Aridos does dodge my first Rock Tomb. I try again the second one, and it lands and ends the fight. 
With that, we can now head to the next trial while once again avoiding as many trainers as possible. So nothing interesting happens between now and the next totem fight, so we go straight to Totem Mimikyu. So one of the other main reasons I picked Head First was because of the Mold Breaker ability. This means I can attack Mimikyu without needing to break the disguise. At this point, I came to terms that he will most likely not survive the fight as I need a safe switch in after he attacks. However, by some miracle, Mimikyu misses his attack, which is the best case scenario by far. I then follow up with massive damage and Mimikyu calls out a Gengar. At this point, I still need a clean swap into Arbreon, so I accept that Head First will probably still die, but Mimikyu goes for Mimic and I live a Shadow Ball. I can't believe this AI and Head First is just refusing to die. Head First takes out Mimikyu with a Rock Tomb and then I bring in Umbreon to take out the Gengar. The fact that I finished this trial with 3 Pokemon was an amazing feeling. To make things better, Grave evolves into Decidueye and I'm starting to feel pretty confident about this run. So for some reason, Team Skull decides to steal a Young Goose and now it's up to me to infiltrate Team Skull's headquarters and retrieve this Pokemon. So I see Grimsley on the beach and I outsmart him at a Toying Cost to get myself a Shaktito that can smash rocks on water. With this, I can now add another member to the team, Zygarde. Now hear me out, I do not usually use legendary or mythical Pokemon in my run. That's because they are overpowered and it makes the games trivial. However, if I leave Zygarde at its 10% form, it is actually the lowest base stat total out of all the Pokemon in my team. The main reason I want this Pokemon is because the ground coverage is going to be good for pivoting electric Pokemon. So Zygarde has a sassy nature, which is actually pretty bad as it drops its speed. However, I name him Goofy and I head to the Team Skull headquarters. I find Guzma the bug guy and he wants to throw hands with my Pokemon. Unfortunately for him, Headfirst makes easy work with him and his Pokemon. I take his money and I get the youngest back. But most importantly, I sit on his throne to show my dominance. We head back and somehow How, who has an Alolan Raichu, was beaten by Plumeria. How bad of a trainer are you How? Anyway, Gladion is angry and wants to battle, so I take care of him, then I get my team to the level cap and I go to take on Nanu. So Nanu starts with a Sableye who will always use Fake Out, so I go for the Protect. I then go for Rock Tomb and the Sableye hits me hard with a Shadow Ball. I go for another Rock Tomb and I take out the Sableye. He brings in Crocorock which lowers my attack with Intimidate, so I switch into Shadow who is brought down to the yellow from a critical earthquake. I then proceed to Protect, Bite and Moonlight until Crocorock is down. So then comes in his Persian, which I switch into Brave as he's immune to Fake Out. This also baits the Dark type Z move, so I can bring Shadow in to eat it. I bring in Goofy to do some damage with an all out pummeling, and then I bite Protect Leftovers and Moonlight myself to victory. Nanu then proceeds to show us his disco moves, and Gladion is clearly mortified. We now head into the Aether Foundation, and I'm finally able to battle every trainer without having to skip in fear of overleveling. After taking out every single member, we need to save Gladion by facing Guzma one more time. So for this fight, I actually have a semi-strat ball, as Masquerin is a threat. So I protect with Goofy, expecting a first impression, and he goes for a sword stance. This was not part of the plan. As there's no one in my team that can take a hit from a plus 2 Galissapod, I'm ready to sack Goofy. However, Goofy doesn't want to die and he gets a clutch flinch on Galissapod. I follow up with another Rock Slide and trigger Emergency Exit. Now the real trouble begins as Masquerain comes out and intimidates me. It outspeeds and does massive damage with the Bug Buzz. Rock Slide is just short from taking it out, but now I can put my plan into motion. I bring in Brave, who can take a Bug Buzz, and then I can suck a punch to take it out. This also baits an Ariados as it has a super effective move against me. The problem for Guzma is that the move that's super effective is Sucker Punch. So I'm able to set up three sword stances as the AI always goes for the super effective move. After I power up, I go for my own Sucker Punch and take out Ariados. Galissapod comes back in, so I protect to avoid the first impression and then finish it off with a Spirit Shackle. Pinsir comes in, but a Sucker Punch also takes it out and now I've beaten Guzma for the last time. I then follow Lusamine and discover that she keeps random frozen Pokemon in her lair and somehow thinks this is normal. Obviously, I'm not happy about this, so I go in to teach her a lesson. Normally, this is a tough fight, However, Brave basically makes this another charity case. Brave is able to comfortably set up two sword stances, making her plus four in attack. From here, she just sweeps with the Leaf Blade and Sucker Punch. The one thing I'll keep in mind with the next fight with Lusamine is giving a Lumberry to Brave to avoid the risk of hitting ourselves from confusion from the Liligant. Anyway, I dispose of Lusamine and I head to the next island. Here we can find our final encounter for the run. 
Aerodactyl. This Aerodactyl that I get is a Jolly Nature which is insane and it's level 40 so it's not too far behind. I name her Fangs and get everyone to the next level cap. Now this is probably a good time to go over one small problem with the level cap. Hapu's Mudsdale is level 48 which means that's my level cap. However, the next totem Pokemon is level 45. On top of that, there are a few unskippable trainers that you need to fight before you can get to totem como O. Unfortunately, there's no way around this. Anyway, back to the happy fight. She leads with Dugtria, and I know that she'll either go for Sucker Punch or Sandstorm, which means I can get off a Sword Stance. I continue to Sword Stance until I know Dugtria has used all five of its Sucker Punches, and then I can attack and sweep through. I did miss one of my Sucker Punches because Dugtria's ability Sand Veil increases its invasion during a Sandstorm, but all in all this was basically a free fight. Happy does a dance for us and then we can finally move to the last trial. So the last trial is Como O and it has all its stats raised, however Fangs is the perfect Pokemon for this fight. So Como O is usually going for Protect first turn, but it doesn't always. Because of this I don't want to use the Flying Z move right away. So I go for a Dragon Call, which is protected by Como O, then he calls in for some backup. Knowing that he can't protect anymore, I go for my Z move and it almost takes it out. He then Sky Uppercuts me and does good damage to Fangs, and Hakimo raises its speed. Knowing I can take a hit from Hakimo, I finish off Como O with a Dragon Claw, and Hakimo decides to raise its speed again. I go for a Fly, which in hindsight was stupid as a Dragon Claw would have easily killed. I do get Sky Uppercutted, but I survive the hit, and thankfully Fangs hits the fly to end our last trial. Now Lusamine is desperate for some revenge, and somehow came to the conclusion that merging with her jellyfish is one way to do it. This is one weird game, Nintendo. Unfortunately for Lusamine, I'm able to finish her off by Sword Dancing to plus 6, and then sweeping with Brave. Lilligan does do massive damage for a non very effective move, and a Hydro Pump crit would have killed me but I had no one else I could safely switch into, so I had to risk it. Thankfully, it all worked out and we defeated Lusamine for the last time. With that all done, we have two more fights before the Elite Four. First up is Gladion. So Gladion leads with his Gold Bat and he outspeeds my Jolly Aerodactyl and hits me with a Cross Poison. I hit him with a Rock Side, which just falls short from a KO. I then go for Crunch, but he brings in Lucario, who can easily take a Crunch from Fangs. But I do get the Defense Drop, which is massive. I decide to go for my Flying Z move as I know that I'll get the kill due to the defense drop that Lucario has. He brings in Weavile which is a bad matchup for my whole team except Shadow, so I bring him in and he eats the first Ice Shard. I go for Protect and I get some leftover recovery as I know I won't be able to hurt this Weavile much either. I go for Baby Doll Eyes to drop its attack so I'm almost at the point where Leftovers recovers just as much damage as I take. I then protect it one more time to get more recovery from leftovers, and at this point I bite, protect and heal until Weevil is defeated. Next up is Silvalli who is a fire type thanks to the plate it holds. I protect and get a little recovery and then I send in Fangs who gets critted, but I go for a rock slide and get the flinch on Silvalli. This then allows me to get the kill with another rock slide. His last Pokemon is the Gold Bat which does get the crit on me, but I can take it out with one crunch. Next up is Hal and for the first time he actually puts up a decent fight. He starts with his Raichu, I outspeed and I'm able to take it out with a crunch. Hal then brings in Primaria, so I bring in Brave who gets hit by a sparkling Aria. I go for a Leaf Blade and I'm just short from getting the kill. I get hit from a Moonblast and I'm able to survive. I go for another Leaf Blade, but Hal brings in Flareon who actually doesn't take the hit very well. So I bring in Goofy and he gets hit hard by a Flare Blitz. I know I outspeed, so I go for a Land's Wrath and I take out Flareon. So Primaria comes back in and I'm quickly able to take her out. Hal then brings in his last Pokemon, Kamala. I know I can't finish it off in one hit, so I bring in Shadow. Shadow gets hit by a Woodhammer and it does some decent damage. I then proceed to Bite, Protect and Moonlight with leftovers until I eventually take him out and finish Hal off for the last time. So I make my way up to the mountain with my team all leveled to the level cap of 55. I enter the building and the professor gives me one last speech and I can finally start. I decide on going for AC Roller first as she's basically a charity fight for my team. I lead with Brave and I set up a Sword Stance. I do get hit hard from a Shadow Claw, but I know from here I'm able to sweep. I take out Sableye with a Spirit Shackle. I then Sucker Punch the Frost Last as she definitely would have outsped. I Spirit Shackle Delmise, Polysand and the Drift Limb, making sure I have at least 25% of my HP for Aftermath. However, Spirit Shackle doesn't make contact and it doesn't trigger it. With that, AC Roller is down and we can move on to the next one. Next up is Olivia and she leads with a Relicant who really can't touch Brave. 
She goes for a yawn and I set up with a sword stance. I set up another sword stance as she must have expected me to switch as she yawns again. However, I have a chest to bury on Brave so I wake up with a plus 4 attack and Leaf Blade is easily able to take out Relicant. Next up she brings in her Ace, Lycan Rock. A plus 4 Sucker Punch only brings Lycan Rock to half health and I get crunched for about the same damage. I finish it off with another Sucker Punch and Olivia brings in her Carbink which I'm able to Leaf Blade to its death. Next is her Probopass who has Sturdy but survives the Leaf Blade anyway. It then paralyzes me which can be troublesome as I get fully paralyzed and Olivia seems to forget that it's a Nuzlocke and she uses a full restore on Probopass. I then hit another Leaf Blade on Probopass and it goes for Sandstorm. Olivia heals again with a full restore but I go for another Leaf Blade bringing it back down to a sliver. I then get fully paralyzed and Probopass goes for a power gem and because of the additional damage of Sandstorm I need to swap out Brave. I then bring in Head First who gets hit with a power gem but can take out Probopass with a Brick Break. Golem comes out and I'm hoping that a Brick Break can 2 hit it but I'm just short. I get hit by a Thunder Punch and I need a switch. I get the free switch into Goofy as he's immune to Thunder and I can finish off Golem with a Tectonic Rage which is definitely overkill. And with that we get our second win and one step closer to victory. Next up is Kahelia and her flying type Pokemon. She leads with Skarmory which cannot do a thing to Shadow. She sets up spikes a few times and hits me with a few steel wings but eventually I get to plus 6 with work up and I'm able to take care of Skarmory with 2 bites. Next is her Mandibuzz who has punishment so the more stat increases I have the harder it hits me. However I did do a quick calc and I know that I was very safe so I go for the bite and as expected it goes for punishment. We trade blows for a few turns but with leftovers, moonlight and protect I'm easily able to finish it off even with the multiple full restores used. Next up is her Ace 2 Cannon who goes down to a single bite. She now brings in Oricorio who can be dangerous due to Tita Dance and being confused with plus 6 attack is not a good combination. She lands the Tita Dance but Shadow is too clever for her and we get the bite off bringing her down to her last Pokemon, Crobat. With Shadow doing an amazing job I decided to bring in Fangs who can easily take a Poison Fang from Crobat. I then finish it off with a Rock Slide and with that we have one more fight until the champion battle. Our last fight before we face a champion is none other than Hala. I left this last because my backup plan for all my fights is Shadow and every Pokemon Hala has has a super effective move against it. Which makes sense because it's a fighting type Kahuna. I lead with Brave who I know can take a knockoff as I'm not holding any items. But for some reason he goes for fake out against my ghost type. Now I see where Hal gets his Pokemon battle knowledge from. I set up with Sword Stance and I'm at plus 2 attack. I was tempted to go for another Sword Stance but I know a plus 2 Acrobatics will take him out and I don't have to risk a crit knockoff. He then goes for another fake out and I just can't believe what I'm seeing. My only guess is because I'm not holding any items the AI doesn't use knockoff. Honestly I have no idea but I'll take it. I finish him off with an Acrobatics and in comes Crabominal. I simply take him out with an Acrobatics and then he sends in his Primate and I know that I'll get out sped and Sucker Punch won't kill. So I send in Fangs who can take the hit well and then KO Primate with a fly. He then sends in Polygraph who will definitely use Waterfall so Brave comes back in to take the hit. I actually make a big mistake as I go for Acrobatics instead of Leaf Blade. Thankfully I'm not punished and I'll eat another Waterfall. Not making the same mistake twice I take out Polygraph with a Leaf Blade after Hala uses a full restore. Next is Beware who I just pivot between Brave and Shadow until he runs out of Hammer on PP. Once he has, I use Shadow to finish him off with Toxic and Bite and now we can finally take on the Champion. I make my final preparations and I head up to the final battle against the Professor. He leads with Lycan Rock and I have Head First out. He sets up Stealth Rocks and I'm able to take him out with a single Brick Break. Next he brings in his Ace Incineroar and he sees the kill with Cross Chop. So I swap in Brave who is immune. With Brave out, I'm baiting the Darkest Lariat so I can send in Shadow who can easily take the hit. And then I drop his attack with the Baby Doll Eyes. Because of the lowered attack, I can take a Cross Chop decently even though it's super effective. I then heal with Moonlight until he runs out of Cross Chop PP, which doesn't take long. He starts going for Outrage, but I continue to drop his attack until he's at minus 6. I've got him at minus 6 and he's confused, so I decide to safely bring in Head first so he can finish him off. Incineroar snaps out of confusion and goes for his Z move but because he's negative 6 this will only tickle. There it is ladies and gentlemen my first death. I was actually so gutted because I was hoping to have a deathless run but it wouldn't have been possible as no one in my team would have been able to take a critical hit Z move from Incineroar. 
I try not to think about it too much and I continue the fight. I bring out Fangs who takes damage from Stealth Rocks but gets a flinch on Incineroar allowing me to take him out on the next turn. Next up is Ninetales who I can easily take out with an Iron Head. Then he brings in Magnazone, so I swap in Goofy as I anticipate an electric attack. He goes for a Thunder Wave and that doesn't affect Goofy. I go for Earthquake and Magnazone lives because of Sturdy and then I take a big hit from Flash Cannon. The Professor full restores but I bring him back down with another Earthquake. This time I use Brick Break so he's not in healing range and I can finish him off with an Earthquake. Next is Braviary and at this point I'm happy to sack some Pokemon as Head First has already died. Also I didn't want to switch anyone into a Stab Brave Bird from him. With that, Goofy does unfortunately faint, but I do get a clean switch into Shadow. Braviary goes for a Tailwind and I go for a Bite, which does decent damage. It then goes for a Brave Bird, which I take pretty well, allowing me to Bite again. I heal with Moonlight and he uses a Whirlwind to bring in Brave. So at this point, I make a massive mistake because I go to Protect to stall out the Brave Birds and I misclick and hit Acrobatics instead. I bring in Shadow to try and finish it off with a Bite, but the Professor uses another Full Restore. He sets up another Tailwind and I go for Toxic, but I miss. I go for Toxic again and land it, and he also whirlwinds out Fangs, which is actually a great matchup. I go for the Rock Slide and just miss the kill. Thankfully, he flinches and Poison finishes him off. He then brings out Snorlax, which is his last Pokemon. At this point, I want to do as much damage as possible, and I go for the Black Hole Eclipse, which does just under half damage. He then sends Fangs to a grave with a heavy slam, and we are now 1v1. I go for the Toxic and it goes for the Body Slam which does good damage to Shadow. I drop his attack with Baby Doll Eyes and he goes for Heavy Slam which I take well thanks to the attack drop. I go for another attack drop and he goes for Body Slam. Predicting a full restore, I go for another Toxic and it lands. I drop his attack again while he goes for a Heavy Slam which barely tickles now. So I drop his attack again but he gets the power from the Body Slam. I proceed to continue dropping his attack and he goes for another Heavy Slam which does nothing. And finally, I go for Bite as he goes for one more attempt to flatter me, but I hold off and the poison finishes him off. I'm officially the champion and if you made it to the end, thank you very much. Also, if you have any feedback in regards to how I can make these videos better, just leave it in the comment section and I'll see you next time.